Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Apex Legends. Today, I'm going to break down to you guys the new level system in Season 14. A lot of us actually expected the dev to increase the level to level 2000. However, the dev actually chose to go with the tier system and or prestige system. So what does it mean is that the first 500 levels, you have the original 500 levels until you have the, the blue icon with the 500 levels. And then from there, you're going to be considered in a new tier, which is the prestige system. And you'll be starting from level 1 again. So what does it mean is that you can reach a, a total level of 2000, but at the end of the day, you will be restarting from uh, level 1 every 500 level. So the first 500 levels in the Apex, you will be receiving a total of 199 packs. And then every level after that, and depending on which tier you're in, it will be roughly every 4.3 levels that you'll be guaranteed a pack and equal to a total of 345 more packs. This will add up to a total of 544 packs. This guarantees you a heirloom and the dev EA and everyone has actually confirmed that after 500 and something packs you will be receiving a free heirloom. So what does this mean to you guys? It means that pretty much you want to just kind of accelerate your um, leveling up system. And what's the best way for you to level up? It would be to mostly play with your friends or actually teaming up with others to play a ranked system. So. That being said, EA direction into the game is ultimately people playing as a team. So what does it mean is that you're going to be seeing a lot more triple stacks of Masters and Preds on pubs and even in actual rank because of the actual level system. This forces a lot of people to actually team up with friends, if not family members, in order for them to actually be able to uh, level up a lot faster. So if you are interested in getting your room as fast as possible, it really comes down to you actually playing with others. Now, it kind of bring, it raises the question, what happens if you get your heirloom very early on when the, in the early levels? Like for me, I got my first heirloom, which was the Octane heirloom, at level 50. So what does it mean for us who got our heirloom so early on? Does it mean that we get a second free one? Or does it mean that we just don't matter how many packs we open, we're not going to get one? That is a question that has actually, actually raised quite a bit in Reddit. Um, so those of you that don't know, most likely, you should be able to still get a second one depending on whether or not you did purchase se uh, separate packs on the side. Now, it is not guaranteed, like nothing in this game is really guaranteed, but that is actually you're increasing your chances of getting another free heirloom, even though you bought some packs. Now let's look at Vengeance. Now this is one of the new champions for Season 14 and she's an absolute beast of a champion. She's a lot of fun to play with and she's a really just a mix of Valkyrie, Octane and I would say Seers in overall in just one champion. Um, <laughs> honestly she's uh, she's like one of my teammates in this game. Most likely she's gonna end up getting nerfed here very shortly mostly because of just how powerful she is both in movements and her actual fire power. As if you guys can see throughout the gameplay when I snipe, every single shot, every time you mark an enemy champion by shooting at them, the next uh, damage, uh, the next shot does 50% more damage, meaning that you can completely wipe somebody in 3 shots, which is absolutely insane for most uh, cases because it is just almost as good as, or as, uh, as powerful as a Kraber is. And the actual scope on it is pretty much a 10x scope on it for a uh, gold um, a sniper scope on it. Which is, you know, to me is very powerful when it comes down to shooting her. So if you main snipers and honestly you enjoy playing with a long range weapon, then this champion is definitely for you to play with. Um, she's definitely going to be a very hard champion to go against if it comes down to rank. Another thing that the dev did do throughout this season is that they actually re decided to take down the uh, self-res uh, gold shield. What this means is that you can no longer res yourself if you have a gold shield. So you can pick up any gold shield and it literally just acts like a white shield. It just you know prevents you from getting finished in a sense at long distance. So at the end of the day, I'm not very happy about that change and a lot of us aren't because that change is only beneficial to those that pr play professionally. It doesn't actually benefit us regular players who really just play for fun. Uh, because it's not, I honestly did not see the self-res as being overpowered. If you honestly can't push someone that's down and finish him off, you shouldn't be a professional in the first place. But again, that's my personal opinion. 
<laughs> take it as a grain of salt. So this is just one of those changes that I really think didn't help the actual community. It actually ended up hurting us more than anything else because a lot of us actually had a chance in order for us to self res ourselves and kind of make uh, clutch gameplays. But in this case, we're no longer able to do that. And as soon as you get down, you're pretty much done. This is going to pretty much increase the amount of people that just instantly quit as soon as they get knocked and really just kind of not really balance the game out in a sense. Um, I really do think that the dev is pushing towards people playing with the, in the trios or triple stacking in a sense with the other teammates and things like that in order for them to become, you know, higher level. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to, you know, how well you're able to play as a team and how you're able to actually play in range because the new champion and the way that the actual game is being played in the professional world, a lot of the actual game star in pubs and even the rank has shifted towards uh, sniping um, legends in a sense. It's no longer Apex legend, but rather sniping legends. So at this point in time, if you really playing uh, Apex Legend and it's something that you enjoy, just kind of diving at people and kind of attacking, getting kills like I do a lot of, throughout this gameplay, and you might need to kind of change your strategy, especially if you play a champion like um, Vengeance here or any other champion in general. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this gameplay, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you watch until the very end, don't forget to hit the subscribe icon if you're, if you're not already subscribed. I will be doing more gameplay down the road with Vengeance. She is definitely a, very, a lot of fun and a very uh, complex champion in a sense because you both have an aggressive game style that you can play with her and a very passive game style with her actual alt. So it really comes down to balancing it out is what I said. I'm probably going to remain in her this season uh, depending on when uh, I play with my trio. Uh, who we play and, and things like that depending on the, uh, this game style so at the end of the day i'll be doing more gameplay when it comes down to her you guys will be able to see me trying to kind of fight my way up to a 4k badge and even a 20 uh, bomb here for you guys so let me know in the comment section if there's anything that you guys would like to know if anything you guys would like to see and i will get that back to you thank you all so much for watching i'll see you guys next time and have a wonderful day